is D2 football, 913 310 You can talk to Brandon Meisner. D2 football talk. What do I say talk? D2 football.com. Uh, he knows the whole gamut of Division II football. And, and Brandon, before the show, we were talking uh, about the last night we told that story about Virginia Union. Yeah. You know, a Division II school, David Mims, the Kansas City Chiefs, the, the, the 6'8, 335 pound tackle play there. They played in. Irene. They played in the Hurricane Irene in front of 80 people. As D2 football getting rolling across the country. Right. It, it, they, a couple teams got exceptions to play last week. Um, the, the official start is on Thursday, uh, September 1st. A couple teams got exceptions. Uh, the first game was last Thursday, actually, uh, between Minot State and uh, Bemidji State. Who, who played in the north and, uh, uh, that was kind of the pseudo start to the season, but it really gets rolling uh, this Thursday. Um, in fact, the, the MIAA teams, a lot of them that are playing each other, are having uh, Thursday games uh, th- this week. So it, it'll, it'll get started in earnest now. Let's talk about the popularity of Division II football. Obviously, in Division II, you have the fringe guys. You know, guys that, <laughs> you know, they didn't quite get the D1 on. They all they think won, they're D1 Or players. they could have actually right. could have walked Every, on. Everybody does. I mean, or they might have been at B1 and they transferred down. Right. Uh, there's situations. Uh, the, the good teams get free. Good teams. You know, I mean, people talk about recruiting, uh, quote, unquote, D2 players. Um, in, in my view, there's no really such thing as a, quote, unquote, D2 player. Uh, it's because there, there's a finite amount of talent. Um, one, you know, the first 10,000 good players don't go to Division I. Uh, the next 10,000 or whatever don't go to the FCS. The next 10,000 don't go to, to, to Division II. Uh, there, there's intermingling. There's inter, you know, there's just there's football players, the the, the highest end. You know, the, it's like talent is on a bell curve. Yeah. The, the very best players are on the very tip of that bell curve. And then high like, speed. Exactly. I mean, those, those are the players that are going to be in the NFL. Okay. Then there's a lot of players on on the big part of that bell curve, and some of them end up in in Division One. Some of them end up in the FCS. Some of them end up in Division Two. Even the NAIA Division Three. The FCS too, though, is sort of regionalized in a way where Division Two yeah. football may not be a hotbed. For instance, mm-hmm. the Kansas City and surrounding area is a Division Two hotbed. Right. There's so much talent that's gone Division Two that easily could be playing FCS. Oh, uh, th- th- there's there's no doubt about that. Um, you know, it, if if you're in Kansas City, and, and I mean this as no insult to to Missouri State. But, you know, what do people talk about here? They talk about the MIAA. The kids go to, um, you know, Central Missouri. They go to Washburn. They go to Missouri Western and Northwest Missouri. Uh, and, and, and many State. other. Let's not, let's not forget Penn State. Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but, you know, if, if things progress as people think they should, you know, okay, I didn't get my, my scholarship offer from Mizzou. I'll go to Missouri State. Well, at least in this area, a lot of people skip over that and, you know, uh, the, the schools in the MIAA will go head-to-head and win battles against uh, FCS teams. You know, you're not going to win a, uh, a recruiting battle against a, a, a FBS-level team. You know, they're offering you a full ride. Um, it doesn't happen very often. It can happen if, if you get pressure from family or something like that. But never, you know, if somebody's off, if, if Ohio University is offering you a full ride and Northwest Missouri might be offering you uh, 40%, the only way you're going to choose Northwest in that scenario is if your family's like, I want you to stay close to home, a girl. You know, you never know what's in the kids' mind. You know mind, what? But. There are Division II football players all over the National Football League. Just look at the Kansas City Chiefs, Brandon Carr, Absolutely. starting corner, Grand Valley State, Division II. Right. Kendall Gammon, the long snapper for Absolutely. a long time. Pittsburgh State, Brian Mormon, the Pro Bowl punter, Pittsburgh State University. You can go on and on right. and Nick uh from right. Northwest Missouri State. But there is a ton of Division II football players playing in the National Football League. And, and an extraordinary amount, an amount that would surprise people if they actually look, you know, every year when the first, when the final cut's made for the first uh, first, first uh, NFL game, we always put the list up. And, you know, and there's 50 to 70 players on there every year. You know, people like Jari Evans, he's from Bloomsburg and plays for the New Orleans Saints. You know, nobody knows that, well, not nobody, but, you know, few people know that he he's a, a Division II player and he's one of the highest paid guards in the league. I guess the question would be, if you're good enough, they're going to find I believe and, that. And in D2, you've got such good games. And I think you know, D2 players, to some extent, though, Jimmy, you're right. They might go into college with a little bit of a chip on their shoulder. Right? Oh, absolutely. Well, absolutely. When, it, when it comes to the NFL, well, a lot of D2 guys will say, D2 players, current players, well, if I don't make it to the NFL, it's because I was D2 and that was held against me. And I don't believe that anymore. I don't believe that anymore. I, I do not. I believe the NFL spends so much money in talent evaluation that if you're good, they find you. 
And if you did not make the NFL, it's not because you played Division Two. It's not because you played in the FCS or the NAIA or Division Three. It's because you weren't. Well, they get invited to pro days. You know, for instance, you know, when Blaine Gabbert, University of Missouri, has a pro day, they'll bring in you know right. local talented players to be the receivers. Absolutely, you know, and, and they, have, they have their own. Pro day. Yeah, they have their own. I mean, if you're if you're a legitimate NFL prospect, there will be 30 NFL teams that will come watch you practice every every year. It, it's funny as as uh, we do a pro hopefuls every year, and people will complain, well, you know, three teams have been in to see this player. Why isn't he listed on the pro hopefuls? Well, you know, a lot of teams have, you know, three three teams, that'll, or a lot of schools have three teams that will come to see him. But when you're up and you have 20, 30 teams that can watch, then you're a legitimate prospect. And, and you know, going back to the original point, I don't, you know, I don't think it hurts anybody uh, as far as the NFL goes. To play it, it, it might hurt your draft position. Uh, you know, there might be a concern, you know, because they're concerned about your level of competition in college, but it doesn't keep you out of a camp. And once you're in camp, you have the opportunity to either, you know, show what you can do or go home. You know, Brandon, the thing that gets me about D2 football last year, when uh, I was down at the Central Missouri game versus Northwest, and I'm sitting there looking at Northwest offensive line. Mm -hmm. I mean, six four, six five across the board. You know, you don't see that much at lower levels of college football. But at the D2 level, you see a lot of guys that are, I mean, and, and, you know, we talk about Mims with the Chiefs. I mean, this right. guy is a beast. How does this guy land in D2 football? I mean, when you sit and look at his size, just his pure size. Well, with, with David Mims, it was a different deal. A guy that didn't lift a lot of weights in high school mm -hmm. and wasn't on the radar screen, developed when he got to right. college. And, and that, that'll happen a lot. I mean, Northwest Missouri's had two offensive linemen that are, Six six and six seven that weighed 230, 240 pounds at a high school because they played multiple sports. They were basketball players as well. All of a sudden, when they stopped playing all, you know, doing all that running, they started feeding them some beef. Exactly, you know, and they, and they start. <laughs> and, and, and let's be honest, they might have come from a small high school that didn't have a real strength and conditioning program. And you know, when you're 18 to 23 and, and you decide that you want to gain some weight and put on some muscle, you can do that. And I think that's a big part of it. You know, and, and another part of it is that. You know, in, in spite of the stereotypes, the, the toughest requirement, you know, D1 gets a bad rap, you know, you see the things about Miami going on and, and, you know, things like that. It gets a bad rap when it comes to academics. Oh, so-and-so's taking underwater basketball. But that's that's really not the case. There's nothing wrong with that quote. <laughs> <laughs> that, you that, got an A in that, didn't you, sir? <laughs> that, that, you know, that's true. I, I learned how to hold my breath a lot. <laughs> you know, the, the requirements for Division One are, are, are tougher. So you get a lot of guys that fall down that absolutely would have been um, at a Division One school if not for, um, you know, they, they maybe missed the credit in high school. And so their the core uh, requirements that they needed to get Division One, they might have missed it by one credit. So now they have no option uh, but to go either to junior college or Division Two. Talking to Brandon Meisner, D2Football.com. And Folks, give us a call if you want to join in the conversation, 913-3810-8. And we're Tommy Mo, Tommy Mo, yeah. Division II football guy. But, uh, you know, let's talk about this, the aspect of ESPN, you know, you know, starting to televise the national title game. They do that every year. Semis. Down in Florence, Alabama. CBS College Sports gets involved in it. Now, um, you know, television exposure, you want to play on TV, you want to play Division One. That's right. the way it was. But now, in, in this day and age of media, um, more games are being televised. So now people are saying, hey, you know what? I want to go there. So the explosion of television now going down even to the Division II level, Braylon, has to help the just the sport exponentially. I think so. And, and I think that the there's also a difference in the way games are being delivered now. Uh, you know, uh, there are so many networks right now that, you know, they've got to put something on. If, you know, there, if there's only – Go back, going back to when I grew up, there uh, I didn't have cable. There was only you know ABC, CBS, and NBC. That's all I had. You know, so you know you're gonna knew you're gonna have Notre Dame <laughs> and, and another and no. one other football game. I mean, there there you would never have seen a Division two regular season game. I mean that that's just a fact. That, you know, we, I, I don't live in any fantasy world where I it's think not everybody big in certain parts right. Of the country, obviously, and, and, and they're gonna have if you have a if the if a if CBS has an option to put. Alabama, Auburn on TV, or Northwest and Pitt State. Northwest and Pitt State are going to lose every time because there's more money to be made. Right. In, in the, but with so many networks, people have needed content, and that's why you're seeing a lot of that. And cable TV obviously has been uh, a big, a big part of that. Not only that, Brandon, but you know what's great about D2 football is they have the playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know, which we've all been screaming for in the BCS. You know, the BCS. You know, it does provide you a good game. 
but it's not what we all want. We want to see the playoff in Division One football. All the excuses that the people in the uh, administration make about not being able to do it at the D1 level. You missed they, class time, right? You missed yeah, class. Yeah, you missed you miss, D2, D3. They have finals. They have they it, it, it's total hardware. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it it, is. It, I, first of all, football players miss the least class of anybody. Even if, they had, if, even if they had a playoff, they would miss the least class. And even most know? conference games are getting on a bus, whatever. They, you're right. not taking classes. They leave 1 right. o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday. Baseball, basketball, softball, you absolutely. name it, volleyball misses far more class than football. Uh, absolutely. Right? absolutely. You know, with 36 bowl games, you have 72 teams, that, you know, playing right. L- Listen, you know, I mean, everybody, any, <laughs> you know, I hate to speak for anybody, but I think any argument that, you know, about class, about whatever, it is absolutely nothing about money. When the F and the BCS schools don't want to share the money of a playoff with, with the rest of the NCAA. Right. Because understand, if they had that, the money would go to the NCAA, not the schools themselves. It would not trickle down to your, uh, you know, FBS level, but non-BCS conferences and football. It wouldn't go to the, to the Colorado States and all that. Exactly. And, that's the and, and they want to control that money. And that's why there's, it, it's all about the about controlling money. It, it is nothing else besides that. Class time, a horrible excuse because, you know, D1 can, can – uh, afford to fly their guys where they where in division two there's certain rules about whether you fly or not i mean it's just every excuse is a very hollow excuse you no know, agreed and you know it's interesting and you have a close connection with northwest missouri state but you know it's unbelievable what has happened with that football